to Casino Smooth here, and today I have a special guest with me, D Major. He's the CEO of the Sound Machine uh, Recording Studio in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, D Major, if you want to go ahead and brag a little bit about yourself and kind of tell the people what you do. All right, my name is D Major. Like he said, I am the owner of the Sound Machine ATL Studio. We've been opened up for a year. We're the number one studio for independent artists to record here in Atlanta and as well as internationally. You can check out all the awesome things that we do at the Sound Machine ATL.com. We have a scholarship program called Major Music Scholarships that offers um, independent young artists that are needing a recording, recording experience to record in our studio, as well as if you're heading to college or you're in college, we offer scholarships as far as that. You can check that out at the Sound Machine ATL. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. So how long have you been doing this, um, you know, the you, studio? You know? For the studio, a year, but I've been in the music industry kind of probably like 10 years now. Intermittently, I went to school for music. I'm a performer and artist myself. And so I kind of been on the production side for like the past like three, four, five years, like working as far as like the Grammys, the BET Awards. Nice. And so I've leveraged all of those experiences and opportunities to kind of pour into this to kind of educate, help educate artists about how to make it an industry. Okay, perfect, perfect. Now, uh, being in Atlanta, what artists have you, you know, kind of like seen develop and grow, like, you know, recording and whatnot? in the studio. So actually, that's kind of cool. We have an artist, his name is Satch. Mm -hmm. He's actually performing in our co annual concert that we do called The Rebirth next okay. next week. And he uh, was in college. He um, like is a basketball player, well-known uh, basketball player. He quit college, quit um, playing basketball to pursue really? rapping full-time. Wow. And so now to see him grow, you can check him out. His name is Saturated. Um, to see him grow into what he is today, where he has like some awesome deals on the table to mm -hmm. be signed. He started his own clo uh, clothing line to raise help for a mental awareness. Okay. It's amazing. So like being being able to be a part of that and being able to know that in this actual studio, he recorded some of uh, his songs. It's yeah. just an amazing thing to feel and yeah. experience. That's huge. That's huge. Um, okay, perfect. Now, you just being in the music industry for, you know, all these years, how would you say the style of music has changed from maybe five years ago, ten years ago, up until now? Do you see any type of shift? Or well, the major that? shift is more so that um, it's less about um, it, ten years ago it was more so about singing. Yeah. Like if you're a singer or a rapper, you, you're saying like some deep stuff, and now it's more so about putting out a really hot single mm -hmm. that people are like trending to, can dance to, can vibe to, yeah. rather than making that music where you can drive on the road for six, uh, six seven hours and mm -hmm. just listen to an album. And people aren't putting out albums these days. They're more so putting out like singles. So yeah. they're focused yeah. on creating stuff more so that the public will like to hear. Mm -hmm. Whereas I feel like artists back in the day, they were more so focused on creating a body of work yeah. that, you know, that sure. comes self-inspired. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, have you noticed the the songs are shorter now? Like they're like two minutes. That's what I've noticed. Like two minute songs. And um, like, would you say that that affects the quality of the record? A, sh a shorter song versus like a long three minute track. Yeah, the, their songs are getting shorter, and it's actually shorter than two and a half minutes. Like I've noticed this trend where like rappers, particularly rappers, they'll yeah. start rapping a song and repeat the same word over and over, over, and, over and over and over again. And then just add like a couple like lines, and then it becomes a rap song. Yeah, yeah. And people vibe to it. I guess it's an, in a sense that like if you're in the club, it's something easy for you to catch up on. But it kind of like if you look at the the quality and creativity behind it, it's like okay, you just said this same simple line over, over and over and over, over again. Yeah. But people like it. Millions are buying it, so maybe I'm behind the mark. I don't know. I think that's just the, the change in the market. People like fast food yeah. content, you know, versus more so quality that takes a long, a long time to develop you know um okay so as far as the, the the recording software goes i know fruity loops was a big thing back in the day what is the best recording software to use now is it like pro tools or fruity loops or what would you say the best one is in my opinion i think i have this conversation all the time the industry standard is pro tools okay. however i personally think that logic is the best one because as an engineer slash producer, mm -hmm. you can create the beat in Logic and you can also record in Logic professionally. You can do it in Pro Tools, but it's much harder and it's less um, effects and stuff that you can use on it. And the reason why I like that is like, say I'm a singer yeah. and um, my producer created this beat, but and I'm writing to the song, 
but say the rhythm and stuff that I write to, mm-hmm. it would make sense for him to edit the beat or edit the melody so it like my words kind of fit into like into the pocket. Gotcha. If you were using Pro Tools, you would have to then open up another system, edit the beat, then transfer it back into Pro Tools and do it. Whereas in Logic, you can just have it one stop shop. They can edit it right there. And then you just hop in the boot and record. Gotcha. So I kind of like that that whole efficiency thing that they have going on in there. Okay, perfect. Um, all right. So what advice would you have for like the chief key rappers of the game right now? They're saying that hey, I can just record. Why do I need a recording studio? I can just record in my closet. You know what I'm saying with a mic and a, and a booth. What advice would you say that pretty much like hey, you know, you still need a recording studio? What would you say to those those types of artists? I definitely think you still need a recording studio because it's all about creating an environment that is, like, welcoming. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I could, like, you know, work... That's why a lot of people can work from home. Yeah. But it's better to work in the office because you're more focused. So, for me, if you can come to a recording studio, invite all of your friends and invite different writers and stuff, you can kind of create a chill environment where you guys can creatively, like, write and come up with concept. While Whereas, like... Some people I wouldn't want to bring personally to my home, mm-hmm. but I want to mm-hmm. work with them. So it's like, that's where the need of a recording studio comes into play, where you can kind of have that dynamic and create your own aesthetic. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so break it down for the rookies out there, okay? So the people that do record in their home, maybe they, they're fine with that. Why would they need to get their, their record mixed and mastered? And break that down. What is mixed and mastered? Because a lot of people don't know. They just know that, hey, I need to get it done for my record. Kind of explain what that is and how it helps the, the track. Okay, yeah, definitely. Most artists don't see the difference in it. But mixing and mastering just gives you that smooth, fine quality music. And most of what well, actually any reputable radio station requires your record to be mixed and mastered. Okay. And because so you won't be able to you won't be able to get it on a lot of platforms unless it's mixed and mastered. And the mix and mastering just kind of comes into place to level out like all of your sounds, make it sonically sound good. Okay. If you um if there's any like background noise in the back or anything soft that you hear, you kind of get that, you know, yeah. you kind of get yeah. that out. And the reason why it's necessary is like most people listen to music through their with earphones or right now and mm-hmm. so if you don't have your stuff mixed and mastered any sound that you hear in the background or any not audible like good quality thing yeah. the person's gonna hear and that's gonna throw them off from actually getting to enjoy and convey the message that you have for your record and it would be kind of like if you getting it mixed it not getting it mixed and mastered is almost like recording like performing live and yeah. putting those raw vocals out there Ooh, yeah that, that's you know. it <laughs> that's rough um okay so let's see. Okay, now whenever an artist does record in your studio, um, I'm sure that you hear all the time, like, hey, I just got done, I dropped the hot, hottest record ever, I want everybody to hear it. How do I promote this? And what what would your advice be to them, or kind of where, what direction do you send them to? I definitely say start out with the YouTube channel. Okay. People want to know who you are personally these days. They buy into your personality, just mm-hmm. like, for example, a Cardi B. Before she started putting out records, hit records, people liked her as a person. And they were they were behind her personality. So when she puts out the music, they even more bought into her. So I say, you know, work on your social media posts, just mm-hmm. posting every single day. Come up with different things that uniquely brand you. So if, like, you're a rapper and you like to do freestyles, do a Freestyle Tuesday where every Tuesday you drop a freestyle and be consistent with it. Because yeah. then people would start to then brand you and they see you as a rapper. So it's like, for me... As like, if I'm looking to have a, a show, and I'm like, damn, this guy, he puts out freestyle raps every Tuesday. Let me hit him up. Yeah. You don't know yeah. what type of opportunities can come from it. And don't get discouraged if you're only getting 500 views or whatever, yeah. because you yeah. may be getting 10 of those views may be the 10 views that you need to take you to the next level. True. So, yeah. I agree. Okay. Um, very quick. Great answers, by the way. Thank you. Okay, so talk a little bit of, about what you have going on. Um, I know you have some events coming up. I know you have um, maybe some, I think you have a scholarship or something like that, a program yeah. that I read up on. Okay, cool. So we definitely, the, the main thing we have going on right now is the Rebirth concert. Okay. It is going on May 16th at Center Stage. And basically what we do is we take, we, we choose seven of the hottest independent artists around the city in Atlanta. And sometimes um, this year we're going a little bit domestically. Um, and... We pay them to come out and to perform 
and represent our brand. Nice. And we also use it as an opportunity to educate other artists about what we do here okay. um, in the area and also give them a platform to kind of connect with other artists. So we do it once a year. We make it this big thing. This year we're, we're lucky enough to be expanded. I mean, um, sponsored by Jack Daniels. Gotcha, gotcha. So that's good. And we have we have a pretty good lineup of artists. Like one of our artists is Nia Amber. Mm -hmm. She's currently on a track with Trina call Redemption, and she's signed to Trina's label. We have um, James Chanel Wright. He's on Braxton Family Values and Tamar and Vince, and also he's most notably known for um, doing, like, the Patty Pies video that went viral that made That's her sell out. Right. I mean, yeah. So, like, just fo we just focus on artists that are up and coming and that already kind of have a brand and kind of give them that extra um, push that they need. Absolutely. And, yeah. And the main thing about the concert, too, is we make sure that we pay everybody that's involved in it, like, as far as artist-wise. Because mm -hmm. a huge problem here in Atlanta is artists never realize their value. Yeah. So everybody mm -hmm. will ask, oh, can you come perform at my birthday party? That's and right. it's like, yeah. they never think that maybe this person is giving you a like their craft you mm -hmm. need to pay them mm -hmm. so it's like i think it's a responsibility of the artist to know their worth because if one person's asking for this for free then it makes it hard for the other 10 yeah. to charge and you know show their value so i'm trying to start that trend to where we you know even if it's something it doesn't have to be a lot you respect the value of artists and what they bring absolutely. to the table yeah absolutely i agree um so do you have that every year or is it just like the first, first oh yeah every year once a year oh. and it's always in may the okay. second or third week in May. Nice, nice. Um, well, I appreciate your time, my oh, man. Uh, could you let people know where to find you out on social media and everything like that? So okay, cool. You can find me at IMD Major on all platforms. And if you're interested in the Sound Machine, the Sound Machine ATL.com, you can check out our outreach program, our scholarship program, the Rebirth Concert. You can actually get your um, music mixed and mastered online there too. And we give you a quote for that. And you can book your studio time online. We're open on 24 hours seven days a week, 365 days a year. Nice. Well, uh, that's been a wrap, you guys. You know, I always give you the bars when it comes to knowledge and uh, people that know about the music industry. You know where to find me, promotion, and your, all your educational needs. Visit the website, paradigmmusicgroup.com. I'm out.